outside of just how the systems operate in Africa, it seems there is deep matrilineal lines. In fact, if you look at North Africa, you have the Imazigan, you have the Tuareg, and you have many other tribes in that region that practice matrilineal inheritance and matrilineal passing of chieftaincy. Further south, you've got the Akan, you've got the Ashanti, and many other tribes in West Africa that are matrilineal as well. And of course, the question is, why are these places matrilineal? Well, some people assume, and some people have been told by natives, that it's easier to prove the authenticity of a child through the mother meaning that it's guaranteed that the child is of royal blood if it's a royal woman because the child comes out of the mother in east africa and central africa there's something called the matrilineal belt which means tribes and tribes and tribes of people and it's from angola zambia malawi and mozambique it's only when you get into South Africa that it starts to become patrilineal. In fact, there it's not fully confirmed too because, you know, the, some of the tribes are very recent or some of their rules are recent and they followed Christian teachings. Because of this, a lot of people assume that it's not because of the Bantu expansion that they are matrilineal. And this might be true, but if we look at a lot of these people from the eastern side, it does seem like there's a consistency of matrilineal exchange. Now, why would most of these tribes be matrilineal? And why would West African tribes be matrilineal? And why would North African tribes be ma matrilineal? It's... It's a very large group of people, especially considering the fact that most of the world is patrilineal. Again, it's probably because of assurance, but in general, the African woman is considered higher status than the African male. This is not something that is taken lightly in the community, as we have read before that the Asantina wouldn't even go to war without the permission of the females, which they often did give their permission, because, you know, the first people who get carried off if, if, if the tribe loses are the women. Even the ancient Egyptians, like I've shown you, they sometimes depict them as yellow because they associate yellow with divine, or even it's the color gold to show the skin of the gods, as they used to say. Even the ancient Egyptians, though their society was very patriarchal in effect, so most things were handled by men, whether the higher-ups or the lower, they were very matrilineal in passing down the powers. So in other words, it would be through the royal woman's blood that you could rule so a non-royal male could get in power the, the non-royal male's kid could get in power as long as they had the royal woman's offspring but a royal woman could not get in power from the just a man there would only be a minor queen this seems to be true throughout Africa wherever you go. Of course, there are multiple exceptions. There are places where this doesn't qualify at all. One of the reasons why some people want to deny this is because it's too much of a link to the rest of Africa. And of course, if the link is there, then it breaks this pseudo gate or the pseudo pill that means that Africa is outside well that means Egypt is outside of Africa again this doesn't happen all the time it happens a lot of the time 